Hello guys, today we are going to discuss about the time series data. Today we are going to discuss about the time series data. Okay, what is meant by time series data first of all? What is meant by time series data? See, uh, a time series database usually it will consist of the sequence of values or the events which are repeated during some measurements of time during some measurement of time any events or any values or any sequence of values can be considered as the time series database here so usually the values are typically measured at some equal time intervals what are those equal time intervals like uh, i can measure in the form of hourly data or daily data or weekly data or monthly data right if you take any sales wise information, how I can uh, view the sales wise information? Suppose if I want a daily information of my sales or weekly information or monthly information or quarter wise information. So I can do some analysis. Such type of database is called as the time series databases. So usually what are the applications of these time series data means? So we are having the stock market analysis is there where it is a, a, a very good example for this time series data why because each and every minute or each and every second lot of ups and downs will be there and a lot of changes will be there in that particular database so that we can take it as a best example for the time series databases and uh, we are having the sales forecasting is there and um, budgetary analysis and uh, utility studies and uh, inventory studies, yield projections, that means how much yield will be producing from time to time like six months uh, period of time or two months period of time or three months period of time uh, or uh, workload projections or uh, process and in terms of software uh, we can go and use these uh, process and quality control and uh, observation of the natural phenomenon like uh, atmosphere, what is the atmosphere, what is the temperature at particular period of time in the afternoon, in the evening, in the mid like that uh, and uh, how the winds are there and how the earthquakes are occurring here. Uh, in almost all the applications we will use the time series databases here. Then uh, uh, a time series database it is also called as uh, the sequence database it is also called as the sequence database here. So each and every sequence database is uh, like uh, uh, in this particular database it will consist of some uh, sequences of ordered events will be there that means uh, with or without uh, with or with respect to time both will be there in the ordered events uh, so the web page traversal sequences and uh, customer shopping transaction sequences are the sequence data here so we can find out uh, what is that web page traversal sequence so if a customer or if a user is viewing any web page here what is the sequences of his traversal how is how he is going to browse the web pages here one after the other in some sequential order and what is the customer shopping transaction sequences how he is purchasing the products here he is going to follow any type of um, pattern uh, while purchasing the data here while purchasing the products uh, so um, uh, these also few we can take it as an example for the time series databases but still we are having some challenges are there with the time series data here see what are those challenges means uh, as the deployment of uh, see if you take the sensors or the any iot related applications uh, huge uh, amount of sensors will be deployed in uh, each and every application and uh, telemetry devices are there and other online data collection tools are there uh, and the amount of time series data is uh, increasing usually rapidly in terms of how it is going to increase it is in terms of the gigabytes per day so in terms of gigabytes per day or even per minute also uh, the time series data it has been gradually increasing here then uh, how can we find the correlation relationship within the time series data how to analyze such huge numbers of the time series data to find with respect to the regular patterns or uh, if i want to analyze what are the trends in the future and what are the births we are having any sharp sudden changes are there or outliers are there with fast or even all online real-time responses here so this has been gradually increasingly important uh, mm, these we can take it as a few challenging problems with the time series data
then what is the trend analysis for the time series data here so here we are having two major goals in the time series analysis one is modeling the time series and second one is forecasting the time series what is meant by modeling the time series so here we have to find out what are the forces or what are the mechanisms which will make us to generate the time series data here so that is modeling the time series data and uh, forecasting the time series forecasting means always uh, the prediction the prediction of uh, the future values of the time series variables which will gives you the forecasting the time series data and here the trend analysis uh, have been consisting of um, four major components here four major components or moments for characterizing the time series data what are those four major components that which we are having means so first one is trend or long term moments and uh, second one is the cyclic moments or the cyclic variations trends or long term moments means uh, these indicate the general direction in which a time series graph is moving over a long period of time over a long interval of time how you are time series graph it is moving whether it is going in the upward direction or whether it is moving in the downward direction this movement we can represent in the form of a trend curves or trend lines trend curves are trend lines for example the trend curves is indicated by a dashed curves so if you see this particular example the dashed curves it is nothing but the trend curves here and this uh, whatever the solid line is there that is called as the actual curve here so typical methods for determining a trend curve or the trend line which will include the it is going to include the weighted moving averages method and the least squares method and the least squares method so cyclic moments are the cyclic variations cyclic moments are cyclic variations this is the second component of the trend analysis so it will refers to the cycles cycles means nothing but the long term oscillations so these are called as the oscillations the ups and downs these are called as the oscillations here about a trend lines or the curves which may or may not be periodic which may or may not be periodic these are called as the long term oscillations so that is the cycles need not necessarily follow the exactly similar patterns after equal intervals of time yeah if you take up to this particular period are there any similar patterns here definitely no why because after some period of time your uh, patterns may change definitely it may go to the increasing level or it may come in the decreasing order also we can't say that uh, during some one particular period of time uh, our um, uh, that means our uh, trends will follow the similar patterns it's not the case like that so how many number of long term oscillations are there for a given particular curve will gives you the cyclic moments or cyclic variations and next one is the seasonal moments or the seasonal variations what are the systematic these are systematic and calendar calendar related completely so examples what are the examples of the seasonal moments suppose if you take um, christmas or new year how um, the sales were there in that particular christmas moment or in the during the new year celebrations or any other festivals like uh, diwali or sankranti or dasara how the particular sales of a particular organization or a company is so that is called as the seasonal moments with respect to some particular uh, seasons we are going to check the time series data here and uh, irregular or the random moments what is this irregular or the random moments here so these characterize the sporadic motion of time series due to the random or chance events sporadic motion means it may or may it may not happen so that is called as the sporadic motion of the time series data due to the random or the chance events what are those random or the chance events means here uh, these we can call it like labor disputes floods or announced personal changes anything which will happen suddenly without any intimation or without any notice or without any unknowingly some things may happen like floods or earthquakes or something like that so such type of moments are called as the irregular or random moments next one is the regression analysis how regression analysis helps us for mining the time series data so regression analysis it has been a popular tool for modeling the time series data to find out the trends and outliers in the time series data we can use the regression analysis but one important point is pure regression analysis it may not help to capture all the four moments here what are those things here 
the trends cyclic seasonal and the irregular movements are represented by the variables how we can represent the movements here like with the letter t trend curve cyclic movements by c and seasonal variations by s and i by the irregular movements so time series modeling is also referred to as the decomposition of the time series into the four basic movements here so here the time series variable y can be modeled as either the product of four variables or the sum of all these variables which will gives you the time series variable y this is the one of the empirical equation like y is equal to t into c into s into i or t plus c plus s plus i will gives you the time series variable y for predicting the regression analysis next how can we determine the trends of the data how can we determine the trends of the data here so if you want to determine any trends or any unwanted fluctuations in your data or uh, something like that means uh, we can go for calculating the moving averages so moving averages will tends to reduce the amount of variation present in the data sets here that means the process of replacing the time series by its uh, moving average eliminates the unwanted fluctuations eliminates the unwanted fluctuations and is therefore referred to as the smoothing of the time series data here so here uh, y1 plus y2 till yn by n comma in the second equation we are going to uh, start with the second data that means from the second data we will start that is y2 plus y3 plus yn plus 1 by n and y3 plus y4 plus yn plus 2 by n so this is the empirical equation for calculating the moving averages so here we have taken one example like a uh, uh, few values they have given this is my original data here for uh, this original data i am having the moving order average of order 3 here that means i have taken the order value of 3 but weights i have taken like 1 comma 4 comma 1 but still we can calculate the moving averages with the for this given particular data here that is uh, we have to calculate 3 plus 7 plus 2 by 3 as i am going to consider only the three values so 4 is my first value here and uh, like that we have to calculate for each and every term here but uh, one of the drawback of this particular uh, moving averages means uh, we are going to lose the first value and the last value if you are calculating the moving averages so that is the reason what we are going to do we are going to consider the weights here we are going to consider the weights here so if you are going to consider the weights typically weights will assigned to the central elements in order to offset the smoothing effect here so if you want to calculate with the help of the weights means see this is the equation that is 1 comma 4 comma 1 are the weights here so 1 into 3 plus 4 into 7 plus 1 into 2 by 1 plus 4 plus 1 which will gives you the 5.5 this is my first value in the with the help of uh, the weights in the moving order of the average 3 so this is one of the example for calculating the moving averages here so we are having few drawbacks are there uh, these are the drawbacks here uh, uh, and uh, that is uh, we can smooth out the data completely and it will eliminate all the cyclic seasonal and the irregular movements also and uh, one more important thing is uh, losses we are going to lose the data at the beginning or at the end of the series here and it is very sensitive to the outliers also it is very sensitive to the outliers also next one is a similarity search in the time series analysis what is this similarity search in the time series analysis here see normal database uh, uh, we can use a uh, mm, normal database uh, can be used to find the query exact matches here and the similar search will find the data sequences which will differs only uh, slightly from the given query sequence so, uh, so two categories of the similarity queries are there that is the whole matching uh, similarity queries and the subsequent matching so a whole matching queries means it will find a sequence which is similar to the query sequence for the entire query we will see that whether matching is there or not that is called as the whole matching and subsequent matching means find all the pairs of the similar sequences that means if any similarity is there in that means at least one word or one uh, line is correct then that is called as the subsequent matching but uh, what are the few applications here that is the financial market market basket data analysis 
scientific databases and medical diagnosis these are the few applications of uh, data time series data and uh, next one is the data reduction and the transformation techniques what is this data reduction and the transformation techniques here so because of these uh, huge amount of the data sets here and because of the storage problems uh, we are going to use the data reduction and the transformation techniques see what are the data reduction techniques means first one is the attribute subset selection so attribute subset selection it is completely based upon it will remove the irrelevant or the redundant attributes or the dimensions here and the dimensionality reduction means it will employ the signal processing technique um, to obtain the reduced version of the uh, original data here that is the dimensionality reduction that means entirely the compressed data we are going to get in the uh, dimensionality reduction and in the numerosity reduction the data are replaced or estimated by the alternative or the smaller representation such as uh, histograms, uh, clustering and the sampling techniques we can use it for the numerosity reduction. And next one is the indexing methods for the similarity search. See what is that indexing methods means uh, once the data are transformed by the discrete Fourier transforms or your wavelet transforms uh, for the time series data here uh, we can access the multidimensional index construct uh, using the few first few Fourier quotients we can access here. So when a similarity query is submitted to the system here uh, the index can be used to uh, retrieve the sequences which are almost uh, a certain distance away from the query sequence here with the help of these indexes only we can retrieve the sequences which are uh, which are very far away from the query sequences also we can retrieve that is called as the similarity query here and similarity search methods uh, uh, for the similarity analysis of the time series data Euclidean distance it is always the best measure for finding the similarity measures so here the smaller the distance between the two sets of the time series data the more similar are the two series of data here. So we cannot directly apply the Euclidean distance instead we can find the differences in the baseline that means the starting value of your uh, data that is the baseline value and the scaling factor that is the amplitude of our uh, time series data here. So for example one stock values may be may have a baseline of around uh, uh, 20 and uh, fluctuate with a relatively larger amplitude here while another could have a baseline of around only the hundred dollars and it will fluctuate with a relative smaller amplitude such as between the 90 and the 110 dollars will be there so the distance from the one baseline to the another is always referred to as the offset value here the distance or the distance between the offline value the, sorry the distance between the baseline value and the another amplitude value can be considered as the offset value here so these are the few examples where for each and every graph uh, how the similarity measures can be calculated and next one is the query languages here for the time sequences uh, so the time sequence query language it should be able to specify the sophisticated queries like uh, find all the sequences that are similar to some sequence in the class A but not similar to the some sequence in the class B. So we should be able to support the various kinds of queries range queries or uh, all pair queries and the nearest to neighbor queries. So another language is there that is the shape definition language. What is this shape definition language means? Uh, it allows the users to define and query the overall shape of the time sequences. So it uses the human readable series of uh, sequence transitions or uh, macros, ignores the specific details also. And if any patterns ups are there which can be used to identify the increasing decreasing of the rising slopes here. So that is about uh, uh, mining of the time series data. So that's all for uh, today's guys. Uh, hope you like this video.